Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Valvoline and Spares Box. Don't forget Benny5 on checkout. This week is an extremely special and exciting week because I'm coming to you live from the inside of the Cresta. We're down here at Circle D Performance in Houston. Pretty excited to be back in the car, actually seeing the cars for the first time in a long time. So, oh yeah, pretty excited to do some work on both of them, get them ready for Sick Week 2023. We're gonna be uh, in Florida early early 2023, so we're pumped to be here and we're gonna be playing with both the cars all week. Uh, we're also gonna be doing some videos with Circle D, so uh, it'll be pretty cool to see how some of these converters go together. And we're also gonna do a bit of a meetup here, so stay tuned, the week's gonna be flat out. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Let's do it. So apart from doing all the service work, we're actually making a couple of changes with the car. Um, in, drag ch uh, in drag week and sick week, we're actually gonna be entering the car into Pro Street. So to be in the Pro Street category, you've got to have a tire that's over at 11 and a half inches wide. Uh, and to get the most efficient use of that tire, we're actually gonna go to a wider wheel as well. So we've now gone to a 15 by 12 with a four and a half inch backspace. It's still a 28 inch tall tire though, so it's not gonna change our drive angle, uh, sorry, our drive ratio or any of our uh, torque management strategies. And here's the tires also just sitting on the shelf. Still gotta get them fitted up. Uh, they're also not a uh, ET Pro anymore. They're a Street R because they don't do a Pro in a 325 50 15. Uh, but yeah, something, something a little bit different. Uh, we're also gonna be fitting a new alternator, to, alternator today. I've got a 200 amp at idle alternator for this uh, from a company out of the US, ironically. So um, yeah, we're gonna be ripping off the stock uh, BABF style alternator and going to uh, one of these aftermarket ones. So fingers crossed that it actually fixes our voltage issues get down the track. So the old alternator's out and the new one's going in. Uh, we've got the uh, high current uh, DC power engineering alternator that's going in. It's a 270 amp uh, max power alternator and it should be 200 amp capable at idle. So hopefully that'll uh, boost our charge rate and hopefully it'll keep our voltage up going down the track. So we're gonna throw it in now. So after all of that, the alternator doesn't actually fit. The core that they've used obviously to build this high current alternator is a modular engine alternator as it turns out. And the mounting flange is actually uh, 19 mil or three quarters of an inch thinner. Uh, so basically that means although they've changed the pulley height uh, to match the belt alignment, it's not actually gonna mount in the bracket properly. So we're either gonna have to machine some spaces up or contact the manufacturer or put the old one back on. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna do yet. I may just put the old one back on just to keep the car running uh, and worry about it later. Um, I've got a lathe at home so I could potentially machine something up before we come back. Uh, but that's a long way to go, just to machine some spaces. Um, being that Circle D is a, a pretty uh, comprehensive machine shop, I might be able to uh, coax someone to machine them up for me or I might be able to machine them up myself. Uh, but yeah, that's a little bit disappointing for the price of this alternator that it's not a direct fit like they, they make it out to be. So you can see there, obviously, the difference in thickness. Uh, this is how it clamps to the block. So yeah, there's no way you're ever going to clamp that up. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a bummer. Well, with the alternator on the Cresta not really working out, I've decided to park that up for now and uh, jump on the Mustang. So, just got the thing all jacked up. I'm gonna do a bit of a, a service. We've got a, a ton of uh, Valvoline VR1 to go into both cars actually, but we'll do the Mustang service first. Uh, I've also got a Motion Raceworks CO2 kit to go into the car. Much the same kit that's in the Cresta actually. So uh, that'll control the shifting in the Mustang and then it means we don't have to swap bottles between cars. Um, we will need to get that bottle charged obviously. And we've also got to replace the um, the Mac valve that's under the dash because that's actually a faulty one. So we'll uh, flick that one and get it sorted. Uh, we've pretty much got both the cars serviced and a, and a bit of a check over done. Um, nothing, nothing major to report back. Um, significantly better condition than I was expecting. Um, no damage on the body. Uh, one very minor issue with the Cresta. It's uh, one of the marker 
lights on the front guard, the lens is broken off. Uh, however, the lens is still in the car, so I can probably just glue that thing back on. Um, they're still available pretty easily as well, so I can buy new ones, no dramas. This is a whole warehouse full of converter cores too, by the way. There's probably 25,000 torque converters in this shed alone, and they're all gonna get converted into performance converters here at Circle D, so. Another cool feature I like about this place is that all of the lighting is actually motion detecting. So they're not constantly burning power, lighting up this massive factory. I've never been in a facility of this color before. Extremely impressive. We're gonna do a bit more of a tour of Circle D later on, uh, probably in its own episode. So stay tuned for that. Pete actually organized some spaces for the alternator. Um, amazingly here, the, the hardware and parts system is um, much more developed than in Australia. You can literally buy machine spaces in bulk or singularly. So, um, yeah, we basically worked out uh, overnight what we what we needed and we ordered them six o'clock last night and they're still going to be here today. So, yeah, pretty impressive setup. We're also going to be ordering some parts for the Mustang today as well. So, need some uh, electric window switches. This thing continuously eats uh, in a cycle of either electric window switches or electric window motors. Uh, so, I think I'm going to order two brand new motors and two brand and three brand new switches actually because the the driver's side switch is modular, so they all use the same switch. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to order three of those today and hopefully they'll get here tomorrow and I can swap. I'll probably just put the switches in it and keep the, the motors in the parts kit for the Mustang. Um, but I'd much prefer to have those uh, on hand than trying to trying to pick them up on the road because uh, we've already put motors into the car once and they were a remanufactured unit and I'm, I'm a little bit dubious as to what they've actually done in the remanufacturing process. So. Yeah, I'd much prefer to have a, a truly brand new part. Um, LMR do all sorts of bits and pieces for Mustang, so we're going to just probably grab all the bits from them and yeah, hopefully we can turn them around and get them uh, overnight and throw them in tomorrow. Well, a bit of a Cressor update. We've got the alternator uh, swapped over finally. Uh, Pete came to the rescue with some uh, aluminium spacers he ordered online, which amazingly we actually got overnight. Um, pretty stoked with that. They were in the office when I went down to have a check, so uh, yeah, got the alternator in and surprisingly it actually charges way more than I was anticipating. So we've uh, got a solid 14.4 volts at idle. Uh, previously the best we saw was about 13.6. Uh, uh, and if I turn all of the fans and all of the pumps on, we're still at 14 volts. So um, pretty cool to see the voltage that high. Uh, especially being that when we go down the track, we actually um, lock out all of the fans. So over, I think it's over 80 or 100 kilometers an hour all of the fans turn off. Uh, so basically that means that the fans aren't gonna come on and draw current going down the path, uh, going down the track uh, while through a pass. Um, also worth thinking about um, changing out some other stuff now that we've got plenty of voltage. Um, is there other stuff we can add into the car? Uh, maybe, maybe add some more creature comforts for the road. Um, potentially even get like a blower fan under the dash or something to, to clear the windscreen. Uh, should we need it, especially if we do Rocky Mountain Race Week because it may get pretty cool in the mornings and, and fog up the screen. So now that we actually have some usable current, we may we may even look to add some more of that stuff going forward. So a lot of you guys are probably aware the Crest has had uh, Valvoline door banners for a while now and uh, I thought it was about time that the Mustang cops the same treatment. So kind of getting to the end of preparation for both of the cars now. So it's down to the cosmetics of it. Um, I've also given the front of the car a little bit of a quick touch up. Uh, the car By the car, I mean the Mustang. So uh, yeah, it's starting to get to the pointy end of the prep now. The race wheels are actually on both cars now. Um, part of that reason is also aesthetic. We've actually got a uh, bit of a meetup happening tomorrow at, here at Circle D. So should be pretty cool to uh, check that out. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, kind of pretty well getting it ready now. Um, the other reason I put the race wheels on as opposed to the uh, transit wheels too is we're actually gonna ship these cars out of here on trailers rather than drive them all the way to, from uh, Houston to Florida. The truth of the matter is the cars are gonna do a lot of miles here uh, in drag and drive conditions. So, um, I mean, we always have faith these things are gonna, are gonna last, but um, there's no point tempting fate. So I'd rather uh, really look after them and, and make sure that we give them the best chance possible. So uh, yeah, now we're gonna throw some door banners on the Mustang.
all of the cars are pretty well sorted. Uh, there's a few little things I'll need to do when we come back before we go over to Sick Week. Um, but mainly that's a parts availability thing. A um, couple of bits and pieces haven't turned up that I was waiting for, unfortunately. Um, but no doubt they'll turn up either today or tomorrow after I'm on the plane. Um, bit of a meetup happening tonight, so should be pretty cool. Um, just a couple of local guys coming out. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to be pretty small, maybe between 20 and 50 people. Uh, but yeah, it should be something pretty cool to look at. Uh, that'll actually be our next episode. Uh, so that'll kick off next week or well who knows who knows what the timing of the episode will be but it'll be the next us trip episode um massive thanks again to everyone here at circle d um to pete chris and the whole crew here um you guys have made me feel like family and and i feel extremely privileged to have been allowed free reign of the shop more or less to work and prepare the cars uh learning vehicles um just yeah pulling favors left right and center um, yeah, these guys have been fantastic and, and I literally wouldn't be able to do what we do without these guys. So massive thanks to Circle D. Also, thanks to you guys for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.